Hi everyone and welcome to the fifth episode of the Vancouver Mulligan. And as you can see behind me, it's definitely winter time here in Vancouver. And speaking of winter, this time we went down to the Connection Gaming Store for the Winter Legacy Classic Tournament. And we took the time to actually talk to the owner of the store, Matthew Baker, and some of the local players before and during the matches. All right, let's get started and I'll see you inside. The Connection Games started um, about 10 years ago. Uh, it was owned by someone named Mike Jones. Uh, he eventually opened up a second location. He consolidated the staff and inventory here. And several years, about five years later, uh, I ended up buying it. Uh, so I've owned it for about uh, two and a half years. Uh, a gaming store is one that focuses on being a central um, sort of community-based uh, place where players can go and play. We dedicate a huge amount of our square footage uh, to gaming space. We want to encourage players to come in and play the games that they're also possibly purchasing from us. Almost every day of the week we've got something magic related going on. Uh, we do uh, weekly standard, weekly modern, uh, twice weekly drafts. We also run uh, infrequent events, things like uh, miniatures tournaments. Uh, for magic we also do uh, pro tour qual or, uh, preliminary pro, pro tour qualifiers, uh, Grand Prix trials if there is a local Grand Prix, like the one in Vancouver coming up. We also run uh, commander events, uh, and we also have a casual weekly commander D&D uh, nights where players can, uh, if they want a central place to sort of play D&D games, they can use the store's uh, table space on, uh, on Monday nights. Harry Wong is uh, someone who's very um, close-knit with the legacy community, mm -hmm. and he approached me about running an event um, that usually quarterly that we would uh, run legacy for, sort of mutual agreement on how we would run it um, and how we would do prizing, uh, and uh, he runs that once every three months. Uh, though we're considering doing it more often, actually, so we actually might be running it um, every other month instead of just quarterly. We've been running the classic events for about a year and a half now. Uh, we're also doing them for modern, uh, so we plan on doing uh, modern events uh, quarterly, but again, we're in the works, we might be doing them every other month. We use the same sort of prize structure, so that way players get familiar with uh, how the tournament's going to be set up, how the prize is going to be set up, how the tournament's going to be run, um, because we hire judges for this event, and uh, the judges that we choose to hire are uh, of a pretty high rank, so that um, players get a consistently high level of tournament organization. Yeah. A day before the event, we seized the opportunity to ask some of the local players at the weekly Legacy Night at the Magic Stronghold about their deck choices and matchups. I'm gonna play Burn. I always play Burn. And uh, <laughs> probably I'm expecting at least one Miracles player somewhere in the tournament. Some Eldrazi, a couple Painters, and uh, a Maverick. <laughs> I would actually, I'd like to play some more Miracles matches because I actually don't get to play those enough. Nobody plays it here for some reason. I might play Painter, which is my go-to. Yeah. Or I'm thinking of like brewing this Bug Delver deck with okay. Nimble Mongoose, Death Rate, Death Rate Shaman, and Delver. 
I would not want to play Burn, and I would not want to play Burn. <laughs> I really don't like Burn. Burn is like auto lose. We're gonna play some four color loam, I think. It's it's a big favorite of mine. Plus, it's the tournament I'd like to do well in. So I'm gonna play what I'm more experienced in, which I think is more the core philosophy and legacy. I'm very comfortable with the miracles matchup, so I'll probably at least I'm confident I'm gonna see that at least once in the, what is it, seven rounds. I don't know how many we'll get. I'll draw these a bad time. I don't really have many outs to things like Reality Smasher early game anyway. I am playing Death and Taxes. Uh, I've played it for three years now, non-stop. The idea of trying to stop somebody else from executing their plan is, is good. Uh, the deck's also a good story because sometimes they'll try to play against other people's limited decks or <laughs> modern decks and lose horribly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it has its particular spot, so yeah. Awesome. Usually any kind of Delver is, is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, depending on how many prelates end up running, lands ends up being okay. But one of the things about the deck is that your best matchup's like 60%. So the only things I want is I don't want to play against um, Belcher or Else. If I don't play against those, I don't care what I play against. It's All right. fine. I'm almost 100% into Turbo Guts. And why I'm playing is because I picked up this deck like about a month ago and started playing it, make some tuning, and it's a really fun deck to play. Always nice to play a 2020 on turn two. Anything that is fair, any fair deck is a, is a good match. Yep. But <laughs> exception is the, the hardest matches are probably Miracles and uh, Death and Taxes. But, uh, but they're a good match. I mean, except Miracles probably not a very good matchup because it's very long and well, the deck is not made to. to to outlast the game that for more than eight turns, but for DNT is always a good matchup. So it's, it's very if you play correctly, it could be a 50-50. So it's uh, looking forward to those type of games as well. And now let's get back to the Connection Gaming Store, where 34 players showed up to battle in six rounds with a cut to top eight. The Classic is the most anticipated and attended tournament for Legacy in Vancouver and all the players bring a huge variety of decks to the table. I won. First game, I got uh, really stuck on lands and uh, proved that Barbarian Ring is uh, the worst land ever printed. It got wastelanded, and I was stuck on one land for a long time. Okay, it's pretty bad. Uh, did did win. Well. Uh, managed to manage to pull it out. So uh, it's pretty it's pretty good. I was yeah. playing against a Stoneforge True Name Nemesis Miracles type brew. The, the true, <laughs> Wait yeah. a second, where's the gentleman? <laughs> yeah, there, there he is. The, tr the true name completely took me off guard game one. And I, I can't really deal with it game one. All my outs are game two. Okay. But game two, even when I saw the outs, he wisely spell snared my Golgari charm and took it right at the end. So I'm 0 1, moving into round two. I played against Grixis Stonehead. Game one, I kept a one land with the lowest final and failed to draw another land for the next like nine turns and lost. And then game two, I just kind of worked out favorably for him and I drew a lot of lands, which was good. So, you know, we got the, the variant side of things, but I'll get there. You never name blue in sideboard games with Painter. You will never play. All right. I won because I had a... Fireblast? No, I had to land to pitch my force. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I lost. What? I know, it's very upsetting. If you refer back to your old reel, I played against the first match I said I don't want to play against. Because I don't want to play against um, Belcher or Elves. Or Elves. Or Elves. <laughs> played against Elves. Yep. Um, I got a little excited when I got here because I only saw this guy on Elves. Uh, I was wrong, there's more. So, I managed to pull a game off of them, but couldn't get there. Generally, bring in Human Priests, uh, Aether Swan Cannons, so you can try to slow them down if they glimpse, or you try to stop like Green Sign or Natural Order. Yep. Uh, and then extra removal really is like Path of Exile. But you only do so much. Sometimes you just don't draw them, or they just get you on, you know, turn three or whatever. 
I played against Jeff in Texas. Uh, unfortunately, I lost 2-1. It, it was a nice game. I was able to make my life on every single game. But there's so many answers in that deck, which is uh, it was tough to, to keep up. It was a good game. All right. Three fire blasts and yep. a thunderous wrath. I had those all in my hand at once. <laughs> That's the, like the worst thing that could happen. Games. And then the next game, I drew two fire blasts in a row and I lost that game. <laughs> I played the mirror actually. I was quite surprised. There's three people in four color alone here today that I've seen anyway, including myself. But he opened Badlands Pass, so I thought he was on Junt after a grind fest on game one. I took it. Game two, I mulligan to five, and he slaughter games me, naming Knight, and then I just get waste locked out, so that was that. And then game three, I just took it with Wastelands in an early night and got in the beats. Sometimes that's enough. <laughs> That tells better circumstances. All right. Yeah. Against Red Black Reanimator. Uh, lose the dice roll. Turn one, reveal Chancellor, and then reanimate Siren Sanity. Okay. <laughs> First turn. First turn. All yeah. right. Uh, game two. Kept a hand with some hate. Not Fairy McCaff. And he reanimated Iona. Turn one. And I lost. <laughs> Playing against Infect. And game one lost to a listener elf that got very big on turn three. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then game two, I played Painter, Grindstone, and killed him. <laughs> and then game three, I kept four lands and three Power Blast. And I was like, this seems reasonable as long as he doesn't have a Glistener Elf. And then he goes first and plays Cataxian Probe, sees my hand. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. And then he plays Glistener Elf. And I'm like, oh, this is really bad. Uh, and then I proceeded to draw creatures and stuff, threw them in front, and then I got Painter Servant. Played my Painter Servant, and all of a sudden all my red blasts in my hand were very much alive and killed everything. So, that was good. Playing against Eldrazi? Yeah, yeah that was supposed to be a good matchup. Like, one, turn one, quick, quick Metal Age, no answer. Turn two was the uh, first time I grinded, grinding a matchup against Eldrazi and lost to Endbringer. <laughs> They sucked. I couldn't, I couldn't find a needle to, to put on the bringer and I lost for a, a bunch of uh, like uh, spaghetti monsters. Yeah. And in game three, I kept a really bad hand. Like they had only like a combo and five cards. And uh, he, he thought he used a uh, Thomas here took the. The, the hex mage and I was outraced by a bunch of smashers. <laughs> ah. it, was, it was a good game. Coming up next are the finalists who made it to the top 8 on Saturday. Unfortunately, none of the 5 players we interviewed are on the list. That's it for the Winter Legacy Classic. Congratulations to Richard, Marcel and all the top 8 contenders. If you are interested in specific gameplay of the tournament, please check out Harry Wong's YouTube channel Tabletop Throwdown.